and I don't know what time it is now but it must be getting on to yeah, it's probably 40 minutes past sunset look at the colors in the sky it's absolutely incredible morning everybody and fantastic to see you all again from what is going to be my new studio now I'm probably going to go back to my old studio quite a lot mainly because this is the end of the garden and it's raining at the moment and it's a bit of a shed so you might be able to hear the rain if you can and it gets really heavy then I'm gonna to have to shoot um, back in my study and also it's warmer down there but I think this is gonna be a better space I'm gonna be able to look at prints that you can see over here and it'll enable me to do more things and sort of grow the channel a little bit. Now, this week's video was going to be a vlog from Iceland, but there was two problems with that. One, I didn't really vlog very much when I was there because I was running a workshop. I just didn't have enough time. I was spending more time thinking about locations, thinking about getting good shots and compositions for the other guys. And I didn't have enough time to, to, to myself to actually vlog, which was completely fine because it was great to spend a bit more time just actually doing photography. So that was one reason. And then the other is I had a better idea. So when I was actually looking at the footage and looking at the photos and the seascape photos that I had, I realized that there's three sort of really amazing and fundamental compositional ideas that come out of taking seascape photography. And I don't talk about that too much because I don't do a lot of seascape photography, but I think that it's probably one of the easiest ways to improve your compositional skills. And I wanna go through those three ways with you today. So the first one with any composition is by its very definition, composition is the composite of the parts of an image that make a great image that tells the story of you being there. And to be able to do that, then you've got to have an ability to tell that story and, and it's easier to do when you don't have that many distractions. And with seascape photography, there aren't a lot of distractions. Certainly if you pull, point straight out at sea, then there's just the ocean, the waves and the light hitting it and then any clouds, which is a fairly simple landscape, but you can do quite amazing things with it and it can help you improve your composition. So the, f the first one, as, as I mentioned, is, is telling that story and, and by having few distractions and you can do that much easier. And that's because you can spend more time doing less. So let's go to the video and I'll talk a little bit more about it. So the first thing to remember when you get anywhere, but especially at the beach, is just to look for little things that might just make a difference to your shot. So maybe the stones on the beach that just look great when the tide is just pushing it out. See how the light changes as you look at those stones. Because if you shoot into the light, then you're gonna get a lot of reflections over the top of the stones. If you shoot with the light behind you in the other direction, then it's gonna be quite flat. And then also look at the waves. You can see behind me here, the waves are just looking absolutely amazing. And the wind's just blowing in. So if I can capture that in a shot with maybe just a tenth of a second exposure, then it'll add to the story of the image. And that's really what you're trying to do. You're trying to portray a story in your photography. So we're waiting for sunrise to come now. I think we've got a good chance of getting a bit of sunrise now because it's clearing on the horizon, but we haven't got it yet. So we're just having a look around, see what we can find. And we're the only people on the beach at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic. So two of the guys, I'm just gonna catch up with them down there and see what we can see. So as you could see from the waves in the background, that particular footage, it was so windy. God, it was so cold on that day. I, I mean, I think it was only about minus two, but with the wind chill, it must've been about minus 10. It was freezing cold and we got there before sunset in the morning. And at the time we got there on this black sand beach in, in Iceland, there was not that many people around, but I wanted to convey that. I wanted to convey that feeling of of the, of the water being br brushed back by the wind. So the first photo that I took when I got down there, I just wanted to, to, to look a little bit more at the simplicity of, of the image. And I got this photo here. And this photo was a good photo. It, it showed a beach and some cliffs in the background and some nice sky, but it really didn't tell the story. 
So then I, I put on my 24 to 70 lens and thought, okay, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit closer to these waves and try and capture the wind hitting these waves and blowing it back out to sea. So I tried uh, a few shots vertically. And as you can see, again, that probably doesn't really work because the sky's too dominant in this image, even though it's interesting. The story is really about these waves. So then I went to a landscape crop and I took these three images. Now, as I was taking them, I was looking about where, where the wave was breaking and how it was impacting on the background landscape. And I really wasn't too happy with the first two of these. You can see that the wave, although I'm catching it going over, is just interfering a little bit with the background um, cliffs. So I took a few of those and I thought, right, how can, how can I change that? So I moved my position a little bit. This is why learning composition on a beach is much easier because there isn't a lot to worry about. You know, I had these cliffs in the background, some waves, and the beach sort of took care of itself because it's a really simplistic foreground. And then I finally got this photo, which is a sort of combination between the landscape and the portrait one because I did like the sky, but I managed to get the wave crashing just at the right time. So I still had the cliffs, but I had that back scatter of water and I got the shutter speed just right. So it captured that perfectly. And I feel that, you know, through taking, I think I probably took about, well, well, well let's have a look. I took one, I took 25 images of that scene. And, you know, this is the only one at that time of day that I really liked. Actually, out of interest, this was taken at 11 a.m. And you can still see the strong, real great golden light. One of the most important things in landscape compositions and, and quite fundamental is getting that foreground right. And what I find is having repeating patterns or something that's really simple in the foreground creates something really, really powerful. If I think back to my best shots, the ones that get the most likes on Instagram that have got the biggest wow factor, then they're the ones that have got really, really great foregrounds that are simple and have repeating patterns. So, Obviously a beach and a seaside location is a really good place to do that, whether you have sand or rocks or pebbles, and you can do that really easily. So if we just concentrate on leading lines, then we went back to this beach for sunset and we had the most amazing sunset. Let's go back there at the end of the evening for sunset. It's the last day and we are down by the beach. It's probably about half an hour after sunset now and you can see it's absolutely amazing we're getting these beautiful lines of the water as they're coming in and creating this just amazing contrast between the black sand beach and the key is just getting the exposure right so we've been experimenting a little bit and we found that one second just works really really well just to create that really smooth movement of the waves We've taken some long shots when the sun was up with the backlit waves and now we're just getting just these wide angle shots of this amazing beach and the sea stacks in the distance. It's absolutely amazing. We're having such a fantastic time. Wow. It really doesn't get any better than this. Absolutely unbelievable. So before we start looking at some images, I want to talk about timing. There are four elements that I think are really important in an image. I spoke about it in a video here, and that's timing, subject, composition, and light. And in seascape photography, timing is really important. You can see how important it is in composition because the waves are moving in and you're trying to get this lead in line. So if we look at these images now, you can see that I've taken quite a few different images here where the timing's a little bit different. But all of them have got a really simple foreground. This is probably my favorite image. And um, actually I did a print of it as well. Let me just grab the print. So yeah, this one is, is probably my favorite one because I think it shows a combination of, you know, really good leading line, but it also shows the sea coming in and the sea going out. So there's two different elements to the sea coming in and out. I've also got this wave here, which I think looks really good. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm really quite pleased with, it, with this image. And then when you've got the timing right, you can start to include secondary subjects, which are, I think, really important in composition as well. So the main subject here is the rocks in the background and the sort of lines of the beach sort of lead to those rocks in the background and the sunset, which looks absolutely amazing. But you can also include secondary compositions. Now, this isn't a great example of it here, but you, there's a rock in the bottom right-hand corner and I've taken it with no water on it 
um, with the water going over it and then the water just being over it and then gone away. And you can see again, we've created three quite different shots from one simple location. Now obviously shutter speed is really important when you're doing this. I found that somewhere between one and three seconds worked really well for the shutter speed. But you've got to be able to experiment. Photography is a lot about experimentation and trying different things. If you just go there thinking I'm going to do a two second exposure of the sea, then some things may not work. If you take these examples, okay this first one that I took in Iceland last time I went last summer, works really well at two seconds. You know, the waves are just leading your eye in. It's slightly different angle this because I've, I've sort of round the side of, of the water looking back toward the landscape, but two seconds works really well. This shot though was a 40th of a second, so it was a much longer exposure to get it just right. But this shot was a thousandth of a second and it still shows some movement. The thing that's really, really important though is you want to keep it simple. So you want to make sure that that foreground part of your image is super, super simple. And that's why I think seascape photography is so good because it makes it easy to do that. You don't have to worry about trying to find repeating patterns in the landscape, which are often difficult to find or more difficult to find when you're in woodland or you're, you're looking at a big vista and you're trying to find some grasses or some rocks that sort of mirror each other. It just makes it a little bit more complicated. So seascape photography is a great place to get started when you're looking at composition. <music> Okay, the third thing that I think is really good at seascape photography is it allows you to experiment with lots of different focal lengths. So a lot of the ones that I've done, showed there are on sort of a wide or a mid-range focal length, but you can look at macro um, photography. So you can look, look at maybe a hundred millimeter lens and just get really close in um, like this of these waves. You can go super wide um, and just create those repeated patterns like I've shown you some other images and this image I, I took in sky shows that really well as well of the seaside. Slightly different seaside here with pebbles. Um, not pebbles a dog, pebbles on a beach. <laughs> pebbles a dog is asleep over there. You might see her in a minute. Um, and then this one is a shot with a really long lens where there's just these two people that I picked out. And again, we've got these repeating patterns, these really lovely diagonal lines in the image that the sea just offers up on a plate, really. And it just looks absolutely fantastic. Again, this is another one. This was the, the, the shots I took of the beach were after sunset, you know, with, with, with the long exposures of one or two seconds. But this one was a slightly shorter exposure just before the sun went down. It was catching the top of the light here. And you can see with this longer lens, I'm able to just capture the movement of the water a little bit better and, and zoom right into these background rocks as well. So it creates a different sort of perspective, but I've still got this simple foreground that just really leads your eye up through the image. And then finally, you can mess about on the beach as well. It is perfect for doing intentional camera movement. You can just get your camera, move it left to right, or just wheel it around. Like this shot I took purely by accident. So I didn't even try and take this shot, and I think it's a reasonably good ICM photo. But the ones that I took in Cornwall a few years ago, I thought really good. I just put a long lens on and moved my camera backwards and forwards to create something. You know, really simple and really quite powerful image. Then if you want to add something really special to your beach photos, then what you need to do is you need to take a spaceman suit to the beach, like this guy did when I was there in Iceland just after sunrise. I don't know what that's about, but it did actually work quite well. <laughs> okay, I hope that's helped. It's been a fairly quick, okay, I hope that's helped. Two more things. I just want to show you a f another photo that I took that I'm probably not going to talk about in any video, so I want to talk about now because it was probably my favorite photo that I took on my trip to Iceland a few weeks ago, um, which is this one here. So I'll just grab it off my desk without knocking the lamp over. So this, um, this image here is, yeah, this, this was, this was fantastic. This was a fantastic evening. We sort of run to the edge of this cliff. We didn't know this was going to be here, but it was this amazing sort of peach sunset, which was just fantastic. And these are the cliffs that we're photographing from the beach in, in a lot of this video, but we were up on the headland here shooting, um, back towards these three stacks and wow, they just looked amazing. And we had the s s snow here, the reflection here. 
I really like this photo from a compositional point of view. I think it all comes together. We've got these leading lines of the snow, snowy sort of s s sand here, which leads you. This is really simple and just brings you in from the side. This is really nicely positioned here in the top right. And these colors are just really subtle, but just look absolutely fantastic. I really, really like this image. I'm, I'm really quite pleased with it. Um, this is going to be going on my website as well. Um, hopefully I'll put it up by the time this video goes live, but if not, I'll, I'll, I'll um, send a link out in an in a e newsletter that I'll send out uh, in the next few days. So I'm re working really hard on finishing off this landscape masterclass. Um, it's going really well. I've done a lot of footage here. I've done a lot of footage out on location. And um, if you're not signed up already, look, check the link below and you'll get a discount when I, when I eventually release it, which will probably be in a few weeks' time. I'm off to the Pharaohs in a week, so that's going to delay it a little bit, but um, I should be able to finish it when I get back from the Pharaohs. I hope that's helped. I hope you've found something useful out of that from a compositional point of view. Once again, thanks ever so much for watching. Um, I got an email today saying that my um, silver award from YouTube is, is being polished, which is, which is quite a cool email to get. So hopefully I'll get that in, in the next week or two. Um, and go up on the wall behind me. There's going to be more things on this wall, by the way. This isn't it. This is very bland at the moment. And I've got more soundproofing to go in here and all sorts of things. But um, it'll take, take shape. And I, I, as we do more videos in here, I think it'll, it'll start to improve things because I'll have things set in place to take top down shots and side shots, etc. Okay, I'll stop talking now. Thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye.